Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jeremy Cordeau, Peter Clayton's behind the camera. Welcome to the garage and the court of public opinion. Now, don't forget tomorrow, live streaming, jeremycordeau.com. And the phone number, which I have written down so I don't make a mistake with it, 0491 65 68 60. Talk to me about anything you like. We have some very interesting guests. I'll tell you about that in a little while. It's Tinnitus Awareness Week. This week, I uh, I didn't think it was all that common, really. Tinnitus, it's it's very annoying. I've never had it myself. I know people who have. Have you ever heard of it? I've had it for sixty years. Oh, you're kidding me! No, I've had it for sixty years. You never told me that. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I've just learned to live with it. Yeah. Is it. I'm told it's a ringing in the ears. Yes, yeah, just a noise, just like an, like an electrical interference type noise. Phew. Yeah. Oh, lordy, lordy. And there's not much they can do about it, apparently. Nothing, no. Dear, oh dear. Anyway, Tinnitus Awareness Week. Pete, we're aware. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I told you uh, the other day, hey, the fly's back. <laughs> Did you hear that? No, I didn't. But... <laughs> Couldn't be the same one, could it? No. That was last year's fly. <laughs> no. Okay. Might be its son. <laughs> well, there's nothing to eat in here, so I can't imagine them thriving or surviving for very long. Unless I'm imagining it. I'm sure I heard a fly go past. Anyway, uh, we, we were talking to you last week about having another sponsor. You know, we've got, um, we've got uh, Elder Fine Art Gallery in uh, Melbourne Street, North Adelaide, sponsoring the Court of Public Opinion and our live streaming show. Uh, and we now have the Rising Sun Inn on Bridge Street at Kensington. And we're very happy about that because these are two very... Uh, iconic wonderful south australian organizations which i'm very happy to put my name against i can tell you but the inn if you've not been there it's been there for a long time 18 oh pete you told me what it was 1845 45 it's never been anything other than a roadhouse or an inn and uh, grant now runs it beautiful food lovely atmosphere open fires but it's air conditioned in summer terrific food the oldest inn or roadhouse probably in South Australia, one of the oldest in the entire country. Far from the hustle and bustle of the city, it's a gem. It really is. Heritage listed, obviously. Uh, everything you could possibly think of. Uh, dinner, Monday through Saturday. Lunch, Thursday through Sunday. And I've been going there for years, for yonks. Uh, romantic dinners for two. Um... Uh, well, five different spaces you can you can organize and reconfigure for functions events weddings birthdays cocktail parties stand up corporate functions group functions whatever uh, talk to grant about that uh, and sunday they have music at the end of the month that's the last sunday in the month they have live entertainment lovely art on the walls as well talk to grant make a booking wise to do that eight three 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 zero seven two one eight three 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 zero seven two one the rising sun in kensington um as i say built in 1845 yeah a history lesson and a gastronomic experience 
New regulations interstate to make sure our teachers are literate. Shouldn't we know, or the people who appoint our teachers know, whether they're literate or illiterate, numerate? I, uh, well, somebody's looking at this. I agree, there's something wrong. When we see our kids coming out of school and they can't read or write, it's reasonable to look at the teachers. But you know, sadly, I think it's window dressing. Why do I say that? Well, the teachers apparently are allowed to sit the test, the literacy numeracy test, as many times as they like or as many times as it takes to pass. What a joke. What a waste of time and money and effort. You're trying to weed out people who shouldn't be in the classroom teaching our kids. But what do you do? You stuff it up again. First, Labor removed the low to middle income offset. You know about this. That took $1,500 out of everyone's pocket. Most importantly, the battlers. Now, on Monday of this week, and every six months, this government and successive governments, and probably future governments, put up the price of tobacco and beer, alcohol, and of course, fuel, petrol, and diesel. They profess to be concerned about the cost of living. The cost of our living. What absolute hypocrites. They take the offset, they impose the excise, they waste four to five hundred thousand dollars on the stupid referendum. Why? Oh, Anthony Albanese says it was an election promise. The referendum was an election promise. You couldn't break that one, but you could with the legislated tax or stage three tax cuts, cuts which you voted for. Yes, yes, you can break one, but not the other. Hypocrite and liar. This is really quite deplorable. A very elderly indigenous man. I'll just call him Leonard. Who lived in the Kimberley in Western Australia. In a little fibro house. Little tiny house. More like a hut. He loved that little place. His pension and that place were all he had in the world. Very embarrassing for a really big company, QBE, a very big insurance company. They kept on putting up the house insurance premiums till they were almost $10,000 a year. This is not contents insurance, you understand. This is just the house. Just the house insurance. The whole thing couldn't have been worth $25,000. A premium of $10,000 a year would be to cover a home worth many, many millions of dollars. This man, out of a small pension, paid almost half his small pension to the insurance company. Leonard is no longer with us, so he spent his last days trying to cope with this disgraceful situation. Now listen, just because you get a bill in the mail, and particularly these days the email demanding money, it doesn't mean you owe it. It doesn't mean it's a good deal. 
and it doesn't mean you should pay it. There should have been somebody there for Leonard among the phalanx of people who are charged with the responsibility of advising and caring for indigenous people to have told him this is ridiculous. I have no idea where, what, what QBE do with this or where they go with it. But I think they should bloody well hang their heads in shame. Reba McIntyre. Pete, do you like, do you like Reba McIntyre? Yeah, yeah, she's all right, yeah. Yeah, I, I think she's good. Reba McIntyre came up with a quote that Caroline found the other day, which I think is really worth repeating. Reba McIntyre said, to succeed, to thrive in life, you need three bones. <laughs> three bones. You need a wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. Do you like that, Pete? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. A wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. I agree. Now, if you listen regularly, uh, you would know that I am totally against the slaughter of our wild horses in the high country, be that Victoria or New South Wales, mostly in New South Wales. Shooters from helicopters last week killed 800, 800 of these magnificent creatures, these iconic symbols of Australia's past military history and glory. The whalers. You know, you can, you, can, you can go back to many battles, including the last great cavalry charge in the world, which was the charge at Beersheba. Now, this should really stop. These horses are not doing any harm at any level. It, 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 it can't be allowed in a civilised country like the export of live sheep and cattle. It can't be allowed to go on. And I just don't know that there's anybody around in radio in Sydney uh, who is prepared to stand up and say the sort of things I'm saying here, which is very sad. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this thing called uh, Neurolink, as in neuro in, in the context of the brain. Elon Musk's company has successfully implanted a chip in a human, probably worse still, in a human brain for the first time, apparently to facilitate a person's ability to communicate with a computer just by thinking. I, I don't get it. You've got a keyboard. You've even probably got, if you're challenged in some particular way, you've probably got voice control. But now they want the human brain to control the computer. What happens if that chip is somehow able to reverse and maybe it's the computer that can control the human brain? Controlling a computer just by thinking? I don't know. Brain, computer, interfacing. What do you think? Tell me on Friday. Tell me on Friday. I, I find it scary. 0491 65 68 60. Jeff Kennett, writing in the Herald Sun, I'd love to get him on. If I can't get him on this Friday, I'll get him on the following Friday. He's advocating that young offenders be sent to prison farms. Now, I think we still have prison farms. But for young offenders, I totally agree with him. Clearly, we've got a problem. And what we're doing at the moment isn't working. If you're looking at the Court of Public Opinion during the week, 
You would have seen that terrible moment at the Flinders Street railway station. A girl with Down syndrome was set upon by two black kids, Somalians or Sudanese, I think, I don't know. Although they could have been Aboriginal, I don't know. The kids, the kid, the, the, the Down syndrome child would have been killed, except for an elderly passerby who came to her aid. I have no doubt he saved her life. The assailants were so brazen that they filmed all that they did on their phone and posted it on social media. But I commented at the time that you probably wouldn't see it on the evening news. Or, no, I actually say you would, because how would you avoid? It, it was absolutely dramatic, compelling vision. But it wasn't there. The only vision I saw was the stuff you sent to me. Why? Was it because the kids were black? Was it? Or was it too horrific? I don't know. Except the vision you sent to us should have been seen by everyone. If you hadn't sent it to me, I wouldn't know about it and I wouldn't be talking about it. So send me stuff, please. The Melbourne Radio reports never mentioned the fact that these thugs were black. They were quick to point out that the victim was Down syndrome. Anyway, my point is, catching these three young girls depended on the accuracy of the description of them, and that, of course, importantly, was that they were black. But back to Jeff Kennett. Whether it's muggings or graffiti or car stealing or shoplifting, we got to do something. Jeff Kennett's suggestion, prison farms for young offenders. As I say, Jeff will hopefully join us in the next little while, and I'll be happy mm. about that. Uh, last week on Around the Dining Room Table, Amanda Blair, Les Elicus, James, or Craig James from Comsec, and the Economic State of the States, Jamie Sanford Morgan, and the All British Day, which is coming up fast. Sue Redman, who is the greatest party thrower in South Australia. They all joined us on JeremyCordo.com. That was last Friday. This week, Vicky Chapman and her life after politics is interesting. She is, I think, the only person I've ever heard of who is an expert on space law. Yes. Lawyers are even up there. <laughs> Liz Elicus with the Elicus Report, how to trust your gut, your intuition. Professor uh, Joel Pearson, the Honourable Frank Pangello from the Upper House. And somehow we've got to do something on Chinese New Year. Don't know what we're going to do, Pete. No. I'd like to do something on Chinese New Year, which is next weekend, so Friday, Chinese New Year. I've got to find somebody who can tell us all about Chinese New Year. Uh, we'll do that. Have I got time for one more? Did you happen to see or hear the press club on Wednesday, not this week, last week? <laughs> Interesting guest. Allegra Spender. Allegra Spender. Independent member for Wentworth. A very posh eastern suburbs suburb now she's a teal now i don't know wentworth has been a, a, a liberal or conservative seat for forever anyway i i suspect she lives in the electorate that wouldn't surprise me at all she's a teal as i said presented herself as the descendant of a poor european homeless woman I don't know. Uh, a whole room full of journalists at the press club, not one question. She is a very successful businesswoman. Her father is John Spender, whose father was Sir Percy Spender. Very blue blood family. Her mother is Carla Zampatti, went to Ascombe, Ascombe Girls' School, probably the most exclusive girls' school in Australia. Clearly, 
from what she was saying, she is a socialist, which, as you know, my belief of socialism is it's communism with a smile. Anyway, she's a socialist, a believer in the climate nonsense, wants tax reform, but God help us, no understanding of the real world or the working men and women who pay the tax and make the whole country happen. Considering her background, I understand she might not be able to join the dots. Doesn't understand struggle. Doesn't understand taxation. She has an economics degree, but a little like a lot of the elites and intellectuals and academics. They just don't get it. And on the same bill was the Australia Institute. They call themselves progressive. This guy from the Australia Institute, a progressive think, think tank. <laughs> progressive, uh, which means left wing. They were at the press club. Now this place is a real stack deck. This fellow, he, he said, if I can get this right, he said the consumption tax increased inflation. What absolute rubbish! Room full of journalists, not one question, not one, hey, hey, I'm sorry, that's not right. A tax on consumption reduces consumption which reduces inflation. Economics 101. The definition of inflation is too much money chasing too few goods and services. In other words, slow spending and you will slow inflation. These people are not only dangerous, they're dumb. So why invite them to lecture the nation? And why not pick them up on their stupid crap? Please! The National Press Club of Australia? God, give me a break. Give me a break. What are the, oh, they're my glasses. Okay. A few birthdays and I'll say goodbye and remind you to join us tomorrow at the dining room table where I have no idea we'll have so much fun. We will. John Williams, 1932, was born... American composer of some of the most recognizable film scores the world has ever seen. Jaws, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Indiana Jones, E.T. Uh, born in New York City. Wonderful music. 1587 on this day, Mary Queen of Scots is beheaded. Aged 44 after being convicted of plotting to assassinate Queen Elizabeth I. Ah, oh God, I don't know. Maybe she deserved it. I don't know. Don't know. Jack Lemmon, American actor. Days of Wine and Roses. Irma La Douce. Some Like It Hot. God, he was good in that. Grumpy Old Men. I loved Jack Lemmon in The Apartment. Now, that's something I can do on Friday, tomorrow. I've got the theme, which was, I think... Um, Ferranti and Taisha, the theme from the apartment, great movie, Shirley MacLaine and Jack Lemmon, the apartment, maybe you get a chance to see it, I loved it, wonderful movie, Jack Lemmon, he was born, he died in 2001, he was born this day in 1925, for the first time we had Eight people in space on this day in 1984. Jules Verne, French writer known as the father of science fiction around the world in 80 days. Born in France in 1828. Disney Brothers Cartoon Studio becomes Walt Disney Studios on this day in 1926. Sugar, prize stallion and derby winner. Kidnapped in Ireland, never found, causing Lloyds of London to pay out $10.6 million in insurance. I hope Shergar is in some nice grassy paddock enjoying himself. 
1983. I somehow doubt it. James Dean, American actor, cultural icon, giant, rebel without a cause, first actor to be posthumously nominated as Best Actor, Academy Award. He, was, uh, he died in 1955. He was born in Indiana in 1931. The first all-metal Boeing 247, not 747, 247 took off on this day in 1933. John Grisham, American writer, client, firm, Pelican Brief, born 1955. Oh, and this wonderful man, love him dearly, John Lyons. Sir John, British industrialist and automobile manufacturer, Jaguar cars. There's an E-Type over there and there's a XK150 over there. All part of the genius of that man. 1985, he died at the age of 84. That's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget to, and I'll repeat the number and make sure I get it right this time, 0491 65 68 60. That's tomorrow at the dining room table. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Peter Clayton and I will be back with our postings on Facebook come Monday. And of course, thanks to Andy Martin, podcast, wherever you get your favourite podcast, every day, a new court of public opinion. Believe in yourself. Thank you for viewing. Visit us tomorrow. And we'll see you on Monday. Bye for now. Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details.